Hello, my gorgeous, good looking friends. This video is a one off. It's not a normal video that I do on the Royals, but in fact, this is something that's pertaining to here in the United States, which many of you know there is an ongoing, horrible war going on over in the Middle East, and there is a lot of unnecessary suffering going on. And this week, Bernie Sanders, who is a senator from Vermont, he's not a Republican or a Democrat, but independent went to Congress to position a resolution, not to change anything as far as interfering with funding, simply requesting transparency to know that the ammunition that we are giving to Israel, you know, essentially trying to find out, are these weapons that we are supplying Israel going towards killing innocent civilians? What's really gross about this is that the White House National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby replied back stating that he didn't think that Bernie Sanders' resolution was the right vehicle to address those issues of finding out how American weapons were being used in Israel's campaign in Gaza. I'm sorry, but it's the taxpayers who are paying for it. And there are some Americans who have a moral conscience, like myself, who would want to know if money, my hard-earned money, is going towards killing innocent people. I think that the American people deserve to push back on this because this vote is happening next week. And what's even more gross about this is that Bernie Sanders went to the Senate to explain why this resolution was important. And he gave this speech to an empty room, practically. None of his peers bothered to stop in and pay attention to something that is really serious regarding humanity itself. Clearly, everybody seemed to be out to lunch. I may not be a celebrity or have the biggest following, but I have a small platform. And with that, I would like to know that I'm doing some good with it. And I would like to share what Bernie Sanders said on the Senate floor for this proposal, because it didn't get any visibility, nor did anyone in the media talk about it. And it's alarming to me because not only is he brave for standing up in front of his peers, being a Jewish person, but also being real with everybody on the reality of what is truly happening. And I think more Americans need to understand what our government is doing from both sides of the house because the hypocrisy is off the rails. It falls perfectly in line with Hollywood with these faux humanitarians like Meghan Markle who have been silent. I applaud Bernie Sanders for standing up and delivering this. I just wish that his peers were there to listen to him. So, you know, in some small way, I am giving him the respect that he deserves for standing up and going against the grain. It, it definitely would have not have been. I think that this was a really powerful speech and believe that more people should see it. Hence the reason why I'm doing this. Uh, Madam President, uh, I would like to say a few words uh, on the resolution I have introduced under Section 502B of the Foreign Assistance Act, which I intend to bring to the floor next week. Uh, this resolution is privileged. Uh, we will have a floor debate on it, and there will be a vote. Uh, there is some confusion, I think, regarding what this uh, amendment, this resolution does. And I want to say a few words about that. Very sensibly, the Foreign Assistance Act requires that when the United States provides security assistance or arms to any country in the world, that assistance must be used in line with internationally recognized human rights. That act prohibits assistance to any government that engages in a consistent pattern a violation of human rights. That is the law of the United States of America. This act also provides Congress with several oversight tools to make sure that this law is, in fact, followed. And one of these tools is Section 502B, parentheses C, which allows Congress to direct the State Department to provide a report on any country receiving U.S. security assistance and that government's observance or lack of observance 
of international human rights. That's what the law is about. And that is, in fact, exactly what this resolution does. In line with existing law, it directs the State Department to provide any credible information it may have on potential violations of internationally recognized human rights by Israel in its military campaign in Gaza. It focuses in particular on the denial of the right to life, a human right enshrined in U.S. and international law, caused by indiscriminate or disproportionate military operations, as well as by the denial of basic humanitarian needs and access. It also asks for additional information on steps the United States has taken to limit civilian risk in this war, a certification that the Leahy laws are being fully applied, and a summary of the arms and munitions provided to Israel since October 7th, when the war began. In essence, Madam President, we will be voting on a very simple question. This is not a complicated question. And the question is, do you support, as a member of the Senate, asking the State Department whether human rights violations may have occurred using United States equipment or assistance in this war? That's what the resolution does. Nothing more, nothing less. This resolution is not prescriptive. It does not alter aid to Israel in any way. It does not cut one penny of aid. It simply requests that the State Department report on how U.S. aid is being used. The State Department then has 30 days to provide a report responding to the request. To my mind, Madam President, this is not a controversial resolution. Every one of us should want to know whether our U.S. military aid is being used in violation of international law or not. No matter what your view on the war may be, it's a simple question. And I hope that we can get widespread support for the resolution. Now, let me say a word why, in my view, this resolution is, in fact, necessary. It is no great secret that the United States has long been very supportive of Israel, providing billions of dollars a year in military aid year after year after year. We have also provided a massive influx of arms and munitions since October 7th, uh, the date of Hamas's disgusting terrorist attack against Israel. The Israeli military has made extensive use of these U.S. weapons in its campaign, including the widespread use of 2,000-pound bombs, 1,000-pound bombs, and 155-millimeter artillery. On December 1st, the Wall Street Journal reported that the U.S. has provided at least 15,000 bombs and 57,000 artillery shells to Israel since October 7th, including more than 5,400 huge 2,000-pound bombs that can flatten entire neighborhoods. The Washington Post reported that in just six weeks after October 7th, Israel dropped more than 22,000 American-supplied bombs on Gaza. And CNN reported that 40 to 45 percent of the bombs used in Gaza have been unguided or what is called dumb bombs. Let me be very clear. This aggressive military campaign has led to massive destruction and widespread civilian harm. There is extensive evidence showing that this military campaign since October 7th in Gaza has been far and away the most intensive bombing campaign of the 21st century. 
Madam President, independent human rights monitors and the press have extensively documented the use of U.S. arms in strikes leading to large numbers of civilian deaths and injuries. The Israeli military campaign is not just something that concerns me or millions of Americans. It is also something that has been troubling to the entire international community. The United Nations General Assembly and UN Security Council have voted repeatedly and overwhelmingly to try to secure humanitarian access, to stop the bombardments, and to enact a humanitarian ceasefire. Unfortunately, our government has voted against or vetoed most of those efforts. Madam President, we all know that Hamas started this war with its brutal terrorist attack on October 7th, an attack which resulted in the deaths of 1,200 innocent people, injuries of more, and the taking of over 200 hostages. In my view, there is absolutely no question that Israel has the right to defend itself and respond against the perpetrators of that horrific attack. But while it is clear that Israel has the right to go to war against Hamas, in my view, it does not have the right to go to war against the entire Palestinian people, including many hundreds of thousands of innocent men, women, and children in Gaza. Israel has relied on widespread bombardment, including with massive explosive ordnance in densely populated urban areas. This bombardment and the severe humanitarian restrictions have led to a catastrophe that veteran aid workers say goes beyond anything they have ever seen before. And let me say a word, let me be very clear about what the devastating humanitarian crisis in Gaza looks like right now, today. Up to now, some 23,000 Palestinians have been killed, 70% of whom are women and children. Let me repeat. Some 23,000 Palestinians, remember we're talking about a population of a little over 2 million people. Some 23,000 Palestinians have been killed, 70% of whom are women and children. More than 58,000 people have been wounded. 146 United Nations workers have been killed. More UN workers killed than in any previous war ever. Madam President, in Gaza, and this again is just unspeakable, in Gaza 1.9 million people have been displaced by the bombing. They've been thrown out of their homes, and that is more than 85 percent of the population. Can you imagine a population of some 2.2 million people and 85% of those people have been forced out of their homes. And many of those people today are homeless, and some 1.4 million of them are crowded into UN facilities, which were never, ever, ever intended to be housing the kinds of populations that they're forced to house today. And today, Madam President, tens of thousands of Palestinians are sleeping out in the cold as winter sets in. <clears throat> Madam President, what is also quite unbelievable is that over 70 percent of the housing units in Gaza have now been damaged or destroyed. Let me repeat that. It is really quite unbelievable. You've got a war that's gone on for three months, only three months, 70% of the housing units in Gaza have been damaged or destroyed. Unbelievably, according to a study by Professor Robert Pape of the University of Chicago, what that statistic of 70% destruction in housing means 
is that what is going on in Gaza after three months of war has surpassed the destruction that took place in Dresden during World War II. And I think when any person in America who knows anything about history or anybody around the world thinks about the city of Dresden, what comes to mind is the horrific bombardments that took place by U.S. and British Air Force and the destruction in that city. Madam President, those attacks during World War II took place over two years. The destruction in Gaza after three months in terms of housing is worse than what took place in Dresden over two years. And now, Madam President, let me say a word about another horrific reality that is taking place in Gaza. So above and beyond the death and destruction caused by bombs and the Israeli military campaign, what we are now looking at is the reality that Israel has made it extremely difficult from the very start of this war for food, water, medical supplies, fuel to get into Gaza. This is no great secret. I think everybody knows it. And the result of that is that right now, as we speak, starvation and hunger is a reality for the women, the children, the men in Gaza. Starvation. The United Nations reports that more than 90 percent of the population there faces, quote, acute food insecurity, end quote, and virtually every household is skipping meals many days. Gaza is at risk of widespread famine in the coming weeks and months. Hundreds of thousands of children go to sleep hungry every night, and desperate Gazans, and I think we have seen pictures of this, are mobbing the few UN relief trucks that can reach beyond the border crossing. These are hungry people who see a truck full of food and they are attacking that truck and eating the food as quickly as they can. Madam President, Gaza's health care system has collapsed with little electricity, water, medicine, or fuel. Only 11 of Gaza's 36 hospitals are able to function at all, and those that remain open can barely care for the patients who come into them. The lack of sanitation and the destruction of the infrastructure there is leading to disease, and in overcrowded UN facilities, thousands of people must share a single shower, and more than 220 people have got to share a toilet. And that is just a small piece of the horrible reality that is taking place in Gaza right now. Now, some people may say, well, you know, war is terrible and this is war. And there's always collateral damage in war. But Madam President, this is not just another war. This is wholesale destruction in an almost unprecedented manner. And it is clear to me that the not Netanyahu right-wing extremist government in Israel is now waging this war in a deeply reckless and immoral way. In other words, we all know that war is horrible. We've got to do a lot better than we are doing now trying to eliminate war on this planet. And in every war, there is always collateral damage. But something more is going on here right now. And Madam President, I would mention to you that many senior figures in the Netanyahu government have said things that only deepen the profound concern we should all feel about what's going on in Gaza today. Several of these government officials have talked openly about reestablishing Israeli settlements in Gaza. The current intelligence minister 
among other senior officials, openly talks of permanently displacing Palestinians from Gaza. The defense minister declared a, quote, total siege, end quote, at the start of the war. The heritage minister posted a picture of the devastation, saying Gaza was, quote, more beautiful than ever, bombing and flattening everything, end of quote. All that destruction makes Gaza more beautiful than ever. Another Israeli lawmaker said, quote, the Gaza Strip should be flattened and there should be one sentence for everyone there, death. We have to wipe the Gaza Strip off the map. There are no innocents there, end quote. And I can go on and on with other terrible quotes from leading officials in the right-wing government of Netanyahu. Given all of this, given the scale of the destruction, the unprecedented level of destruction, and the extensive use of U.S. arms in this campaign, including thousands of massive 2,000-pound bombs, Congress must act to conduct real oversight. That is what the law is about. And that is why I hope that we're going to have widespread support for the 502B resolution that I will be offering next week. Madam President, the United States, whether we like it or not, is deeply complicit in what is going on in Gaza right now. Those are our weapons that are killing women and children in huge numbers, that are destroying homes in huge numbers, that are causing massive levels of injury, that are resulting in the hunger, the lack of medical care that the people of Gaza are now experiencing. Madam President, I have supported Israel for many years, and many of my colleagues have as well. And I don't think there's any debate in Congress that Israel has a right to live in peace and security, something that has not always been the case. They've been subjected time and again to horrific terrorist attacks. They have the right to live in peace and security. But I do not believe we are doing Israel any favors by ignoring what their policies are doing right now. Friends, Madam President, have to be prepared to tell friends the truth. And if Israel is a friend of ours as it is, we have got to tell them the truth. And the truth is that all over the world, people are outraged by Netanyahu's campaign and destruction against the Palestinian people in Gaza. Madam President, the Biden administration has urged Israel to change its tactics and to be more targeted in its military operations and to protect civilians. We have heard the president say this over and over again. We've seen Secretary Blinken saying this over and over again. But the Netanyahu government clearly has not listened. And they have continued their very destructive and I suspect a war in violation of international uh, law, their, their war in violation of international law. And in my view, that approach is simply unacceptable and not something that we should be supportive of. And in my view, the United States must end our complicity in what is going on in Gaza right now. Madam President, what this resolution is about, again, is not cutting one nickel of aid to Israel. That's not what this resolution does. And you don't have to agree with me in terms of what I perceive is going on in Israel today. You can disagree with me completely. All that this resolution does is ask for more information from the State Department which allows us to determine whether or not Israel is violating international law. 
This is information Congress should have, and whatever your views on the war may be, this resolution should be something that you can support. We are asking the State Department for information. That's what we're doing. That's all this resolution does. If you believe that the campaign, military campaign in Gaza from Israel has been indiscriminate, as I do, then we have a responsibility to ask that question. If you believe that Israel has done nothing wrong, that what they are doing is consistent with international law, which is what the Israeli government says, then the information coming from the State Department should buttress your belief. So, Madam President, let me conclude by saying that we are not all likely to agree on the Israeli-Palestinian situation anytime soon. And we will have more chances to debate these issues if and when we consider a foreign aid supplemental bill. But asking for more information how American arms and security assistance is being used, particularly amid the level of death and destruction we are seeing in Gaza right now, should not be controversial. In fact, it is exactly what our job is. And with that, Madam President, I yield the floor.